Hey guys, welcome back, it's Lucid, and we have another episode here with Champions Arena, which is a kind of cool mod we made where uh, you get to fight in the arena, and we're almost to the arena part. In fact, this episode will have the first arena battle, though it is not the official arena. Um, the official arena will have a message announcing how many points you get. Um, this is actually the in-game arena, which it's pretty cool that it's coming the actual turn before the normal arenas start. So, um... Message from Helheim. Since we're recording this, I'm just going to say I've gotten really lucky with these two site searches before my god goes permanently on crafting duty, especially the water gem income, so I don't need to alchemize for it. Nice. And then from end, Kirby, uh, going to try and make a play for the throne in 150 um, the turn after this. Uh, I'm sending uh, some mercs to maybe soften them up because their contract expires this turn. It's knights and two expansion groups. Wish me luck. I think we looked at this and we were like, yeah, there's no way that's going to work. But uh, let's see if it does maybe work. Wait, this is Thrones, it's not the Knights. Guess that was supposed to soften it up. It didn't soften very much. Um, this is maybe what he was referring to. I think that was another Merc contract. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's no way this ends well. Oh, come on. He cannot win this. Oh, my God. These... And Sacreds got some pretty... I mean, first of all, they're units. But, uh, I mean, they got some pretty good dice rolls in there, too. Uh, they must be, at like... Um, he must have Undying or something. Okay. No? Damn! Them dice rolls! Okay. Well, I take it back. Uh, let's go take a look around and see what's happening this turn. Um... <laughs> And, uh, let's see what else. Uh, underwater, there's not too much happening. Uh, Relay took this, Pelagia has this. There's still a few contested provinces over here which people can take at their leisure. Okay, well, he's got heavy... Ca he should be able to take this now with a big pile of sacreds and heavy calf. And a lot of the end leaders are priests, so they should be able to banish an <coughs> any long dead that the, the dudes here summon. So that's nice. Um, relay, mostly done. The god is over here. I bet the god is sight searching. I think that's probably what most people have their gods doing right now. Uh, except for Macone, which uh, has his slaying elephants. Because the great rooster does that very well. It's one of those provinces that would be a nightmare to take unless you have size six things. It has a lot of elephants. He's actually taking a fair amount of damage and does not have personal region yet. Um, he still has the same script, actually. I don't know how much that contributed to it, but um, anyway, that worked. Uh, up here, he's expanded, didn't lose much. Uh, this actually is pretty good formation. I wonder if he sacrificed any of these helots. Oh, he just kind of has them rolling in. Oh, no, they run. Yeah, the Gigantes are pretty good, though, so. That was actually a little dicey. I think he could have scripted that better, but... Um, okay, Jotunheim here, clearing out the cavemen. And, uh, yeah, so that's basically... This was the throne... Where, where's the other throne? Okay, this was the throne they threw away. This was the province with the heavy cab they took that was unbelievable that that worked. But it did. It totally worked. He didn't, I don't think he took one loss. That was amazing. Um, coming over to Arcacephaly, uh, they have expanded over here. 18 Heart Companions. That is a lot of Heart Companions. And I think that's it for them. No sign of their god yet. We have um, the Dark Elves expanding northwards. Helheim. Helheim going a bit crazy this turn on expansion. Uh, I think this might put him up at 
If he's not first, he's gonna be second, I bet. Oh, nope. He's tied for fourth. But that's okay, they're all pretty close. Um, Ubar, way over here. Mm. He has not managed, so it's good he hit this. He can now split, but he's, I don't know if he knows, he's gonna bump Helheim probably in these two provinces. Um, I don't, and this is a pretty big squad. This is 10 uh, Hell Herdings. If Helheim splits, it's possible he'll lose a stack. If he doesn't split, um, he will probably wipe Ubar whichever province he goes to. But Ubar is going to probably go after three of these. Um, the significance of this is, of course, if Ubar gets all three of these, he's going to seal off any internal expansion for Helheim uh, into this core land. And that's going to be real nice for Ubar. Um, meanwhile, though, Ubar hasn't taken anything really north of them. And, um, yeah. That's, uh, did we finish this? Arco, oh, Hinnom. Got attacked by wolves. The One of the side rules for this game is if you get attacked by indies, it's still your province. Uh, people can't take it back because that's not what this particular game mode is about. And, um, yeah. So, here we go. Niflheim expanding over here. I think that's about it. Niflheim struggled a bit with the expansion. They weren't using any sacreds. They were just using the Jotun units, which uh, normally works pretty okay, but it's not great. Um, a lot of times these Jotun units struggle. They just don't have a lot of attack density. It's one of the things on Vettiheim, having little goblins, or even on Jotunheim, having goblins that can fit in between the big Jotun units makes a big difference. Anyhow. Um, yeah, I think that covers that. Um, on to Ur, who was in first place for expansion, though he has lost his god, so he would be even higher if that's possible to believe. Uh, yeah, Ur is looking pretty darn nice. Pretty big. Uh, a couple more uh, successful expansions. I think that will keep him in the top spot. Yep. He's still in the top spot. Uh, we've covered Ubar. Kalum had been struggling to expand a little bit. Um, they had been doing some kind of cool things with the Eagle Kings, but I think they had them scripted wrong. They were, they were putting way too many spells on them, um, and they needed them to just... Uh, Okay, well, they've got a fort up, though, so that's nice. This might be the first, second fort we've seen. So that's good. Um, I guess they saved a lot of money making troops, so they got a really good first fort timing. But, yeah, their expansion has really, really suffered, and that could potentially hurt their gym income a lot. Uh, and I'm, I'll be interested to see how the Eagle Kings do. The Eagle Kings, in my opinion, are low-tier super combatants, or very high-end thugs. Um, but... I don't know how that's going to cut it in the arena. We will see, though. They are Air 4 mages, which is kind of a big deal. And they have really good cross paths, so we'll see. Um, over into Dione land. Yeah, we have a few things. They've taken that. They, um, I think they've sight-searched, too, a little bit. I don't know where the god was sight-searching. Uh, I know he said he was in a message that comes up next time. I was going to see if I could find it. Uh, I don't think I can. Canted Tomb, Merman Village. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Satis, who was very fast expanding, but has since slowed down a good bit, uh, still has a fair amount of land. He's got the Devourer of Souls at home with a lot of Keepers of the Tomb. And Atlantis has gone on land here. Uh, they failed to take this. So presumably <coughs> this will go to end. Uh, yes, I don't know if maybe they've given up. Um, which honestly, given this start position, I can't really shame them for that. Um, but, you know, you honestly don't need... You, you could theoretically win the game with just four provinces. Uh, but you probably do want to get out and site search them. This one appears to have a death site. Will of Pestilence. And he has a temple here. So that could be a little concerning. Uh, Kraken is stationed in the lab. And guys, get ready, because um, there is an arena this turn, as we mentioned. And we're done covering expansion. There will be more expansion, but uh, we're not talking about it anymore. Um, now we are talking about the main portion of the game, which is the actual arena. So here we go, boys. Um, let's see. Uh, okay.
So uh, we have some messages. We have a message from Yoni, Yomi, where he's explaining his strategy. Uh, my apology in advance for the small novel I'm about to write. The way I see it, there are a few ways to improve power in the arena in no particular order. The chassis, gems and gear, research, and bless. Uh, maybe pass on your god if you intend to use him for battle. Other considerations are path access for crafting gear. Yomi grants me a solid chassis every other turn in the form of an angry demon. Um, the research is tricky, though, since I only get one commander recruitment point in my shitty palisade. But I do have foreign recruitable mages in hills uh, and mountains, so overall not the best, not the worst. And yeah, the foreign recruit is pretty good in this situation because you don't really have to worry about people raiding you or anything like that. And it's actually pretty cheap to get infrastructure going. Uh, I went with a boring awake sage researcher with a mega hell bless. Quick, I wouldn't call this boring. Uh, quickness, fate weaving, larger, plus two attack, 10 shock resistance, five PR. We've already looked at this. This accomplishes a few things. I get fairly strong SCs with my godfather sage, um, can sit uh, and do early research for more reliable expansion and alt for construction too when the arena fight starts. Good expansion uh, means uh, path access from indies and hopefully decent gym income that will keep up with the continual loss of gear. And that is a very important point because um, if you think about it, even if you have slow to recruit commanders out of your capital, and if you lose them every turn in the arena battle, you're not going to be able to keep sending them in. So it's going to be very interesting. And which turn you choose to send your your dudes in may have to do with what gods got killed in the previous turn or something like that. Um, and if you're doing a god strategy, you probably also want to have a lot of people who can summon your god back. Um, I hope the bless will turn my Dione into blenders once I get some gear on them. Plus, um, negating luck might be worth it since luck seems like pretty common. Uh, seems pretty common on items. It might be dog shit. Luck is really good in arena battles uh, a lot of times. Uh, as a budget thing. I don't know if it's gonna, it's not gonna make it onto like high-end chassis, but on low commitment stuff, luck is really good. Um, I have no idea. Uh, with the built-in resists, I'm gonna be at 10 PR, 10 shock resistance, 10 fire resistance, a pretty good baseline. Notably, I'm missing cold, so Neeple Giants might fatigue uh, them out. Uh, I dumpstered my scales completely, but gold won't be that useful other than slowly boosting research. So um, I will have to make do with what I have. My main issue is probably um, attack, defense, magic resist, cold resist, which I'll patch with gear. Uh, I also spotted some scary looking pretenders, but there are probably many of those. Part of the plan is that they should start out thin as they encounter, uh, as they kill each other. They should start to thin out as they kill each other uh, or die to the onslaught of demon boys. Uh, but to be honest, there are a lot of threat vectors to be worried about, and I feel like uh, being ready to adapt with many tools is probably a good approach. Okay. And uh, from Hinnom, I saw the arena was happening uh, a turn early because he had a fortune teller message. So I managed to forge uh, some Dione killing gear from my Melquirt. Meanwhile, the Earth Random guy is waiting for profits, uh, for the profits power to leave the world so I can profit him. That's a really good thing because your, um, your profit will carry HP with them into the arena if they're in like a really high uh, Dominion province. And research construction for, for the real cheese of lifelong protection and things. Yeah. Okay. So we now have a bunch of battles, and we will watch them. We're not going to pay any more attention to expansion. As far as I'm concerned, that's over. Okay. Um, oh, this is a people's arena, so it's a slave collar. Uh, I forgot this. So the normal arenas that we have done are not... Uh, they're not people's arenas. They're all full magic path things. Um, but you can't bring any of that here. So this Dione, um, oh, he's super afflicted. So he brought in one of the Dionys he doesn't really care much about. What uh, what uh, thing does he have? Lightning reflexes. Okay. I think we know how this goes. Uh, and then next we have Relay and Hinnom. So Hinnom has a Giga Chad Melquirt. And uh, he's got luck, which is interesting because he was just speculating that uh, Fate Weaving would be good for negating luck. And this guy is particularly good in um, people's arenas because this feeble-minded that everybody has gives them um, um, an MR penalty, so the thing's more likely to hit. I don't think that's going to matter here. And he didn't seem to be on fire. He was I don't know what he was doing. But uh, yeah, he got wrecked. 
Wait, whoops. He got wrecked. And the next fight is between Jotunheim and Hinnom. And Jotunheim sending in the uh, the commander. I think we know how that goes. And then we have And versus Ubar. Uh, okay. I don't know if this guy forgot. Yen and me aren't very good without any gear or magic paths. It's actually a close fight with this screaming externally. Oh, he's feeble-minded, so he couldn't run even though he got routed, huh? Why would he have routed? Doesn't make any sense. He never got hit. All right, next up, we have a battle with Pelagia and Ubar. See, I think he probably... I think the strategy of, like, sending in a busted-up Dione was a great one. And then I think the strategy for Hinnom was a good one, too. Um, now, this... By the way, the points for this one are not going to count. Um, because this is not one of the sanctioned in-game arena events. So there's only a certain number of points... And the, the things from this aren't going to count. However, um, the item you get as a result will matter. Okay, so the Pelagian guy dies. And now we have uh, Yomi. Okay, this is going to probably be the coolest one of the whole thing. We've got Yomi versus... All right, who do you think is going to win? This guy with no gear, not blessed, and he happens to be cursed. Um, or this guy with gear specifically designed to murder... Uh, Dione. Okay, I think we, we see how that went. Uh, yoink. And then we have a battle between Ubar and Hinnom. Okay, I think we see how that went. And then Arco, who we haven't seen... Uh, Okay, I think he, they, he didn't notice this was a... Sl I think some people didn't notice this was a people's arena. Because this guy was probably set up to skelly spam. Um, okay, and so what did he win? A rune smasher. Huh. Very good item to get uh, if this were a vanilla game. But I don't think it's going to be super useful in the arena. But who knows? <coughs> um, the other nice thing, and it, we'll be able to see here... This guy already a hero? He's not a hero, so he's also going to get uh, a hero tag, which is going to be real nice. So um, that's another reason to win an arena, because you're going to become in the Hall of Fame. Uh, so that is it, guys. Uh, tune back in next time, and we'll watch the next series of arenas, and we will see you all then.